Welcome to Talk Save Culture Talks, the podcast of Paradisic, the Pacific and Regional Archive for Digital Sources in Endangered Cultures. I'm Jody Kell. And I'm Stephen Gagao. These are conversations with people who have personal and cultural connections to the languages and music in our archive. Terry Crowley was a respected and prolific linguist who made major contributions to the study of Oceanic and Australian languages as a researcher and teacher. He won the University Medal at ANU for his honours thesis on the Bundjalung language of northern New South Wales and went on to complete his PhD in 1980, also at ANU, researching the language spoken on the island of Palma in Vanuatu. Out of this research, he published a dictionary and grammar of Palmese language, and he created the TC1 collection in the Paradisic Archive, one of 10 collections he made of Vanuatu language materials. Terry passed away unexpectedly in 2005, and he is sorely missed across the Pacific. In his memoriam, published in the Oceanic Linguistics Journal, John Lynch said of him, Terry treated all of his field trips as a social occasion and cultural learning experience, not for him working in seclusion only to emerge when it was time for another tape recording session. He participated fully in the life of each village he stayed in, helping with gardening and fishing and carver preparation and drinking. This attitude of involvement with and respect for the people flowed over into many of his publications. We would like to dedicate this episode to Terry and his life's work. Pama is a small island that is only eight kilometres long and five kilometres wide in the Malampa province, located in the northern part of Vanuatu. Within the province, Pama lies south of Ambram, east of Malakula, west of Lopevi and north of Epi. The island's council and administrative centre is at Liro in the northwest of the island. Most people live in villages close to the coast and make their gardens in the hillsides nearby, mainly for subsistence, although some is exported for sale in Port Vila. The island's population is only 1,600. However, over 7,000 people whose heritage is from Pama are living elsewhere in Vanuatu and overseas. This migration endangers the local Palmese language as people need to use other languages in their day-to-day lives. Tom Johnny Obed comes from Liro village on Palmer Island and now lives in Sydney. He was a high school teacher in Vanuatu and in this episode, you can hear his thoughts about ways to maintain his heritage of the language, culture and music of Palmer Island and the value of Terry's work. Welcome, Johnny, to our Talk Save podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Well, I really want to say how thankful I am coming into this place. It's a great honour uh, to be actually interviewed about your own um, language. And uh, it's a rare opportunity finding this in Australia like this. Nasi nao numeko, ventausian misanyuen now, and selusian tenon pama. Not Vanuatu. I go maybe not to Australia. And I'm going to buy a Fabian Vin, and I'll see the sun, the Sina Holu, no Mayako, and Camita Laco. And out of Sydney, and Gaik, Steve, Brass, Nasina Holu, Hihuri Marite. Thank you for your warm introduction, Johnny. Thank you. Do you know? The collector or the researcher Terence Crowley in the work that he did on field work. Uh, any stories or observations you'd like to share about Terry uh, uh, during his time uh, on Palmer Island, Vanuatu? 
Indeed, I have met Terry, and uh, that was an honor as well. I was, it's back in the late 70s when I met Terry you know, on the island of Palma. At the time, uh, he was in the village, just walking around, looking and gathering information and learning to try to speak the language. And later on, um, in 1988, I, when I finished my studies in Adelaide, I went back to Vanuatu. I had a chance of meeting him in Vila, and we had coffee together. But I was more um, taken apart by the way he was speaking fluent Pamis. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had coffee together at that short time, and I treasure that moment. In the town, it was going around that there was a man who could speak Pami's language. And that's where all the Pama people, it was, we took pride in it because it was the first time knowing your language has been highlighted in the city. Mm. And just going on that, you have in your hands the dictionary of Pami's that he wrote, obviously from his research. Um, how are you feeling about seeing a book <coughs> like this? Uh, and mm. this is gold to me. But here holding it in this place, in front of you and in front of me, I, I am moved. Uh, it's a sense of an awe um, that has overtaken me, that here is something that it is for my people. Yes. Okay, well, part of our work at Paradisic is more about the cultural significance, the meanings that we want to relay back mm -hmm. to the communities that, come, that they come from. Mm -hmm. So what do you see the value of Terry's work? Well, firstly, the value is language is, is if you lost it, you lost it. It is something that it has to be rescued and saved at all costs um, because that's uh, your identity. I think Terry, not knowing that he would die, he has given us a gift mm. in a short time. Mm. He gave us a gift and these two books have said it and for me this is value, in, invaluable. Mm. Uh, I just look at it and I see that there's some work, uh, some words have already gone missing mm. from the everyday language. Uh, some needs, this needs desperately re to be revived. Mm. And the government of Vanuatu should do something about it. Mm. And the people of Palma should do something mm. about it. Mm. Um, that's the value that it has now, this uh, need to rescue this. Do young people speak the Palmes language day to day on the island? Do they, they use it? On, on the island, yes. Yeah. And day. what's the language of uh, instruction in their schools? Okay, it's English or French. Or Islam, I heard they're trying to bring Islam back into schools. But for the islanders who don't use a lot of Islam, mm. that is not helping them. Mm. They need their island to be, because they communicate with it every day. Um, it is something that would be first used in their own island would be better mm -hmm. than using Pislam as the national language because that can be picked up very easily. Yes. Uh, the, na the native tongue is where the problem lies. You don't want to lose that one. Mm. So your thoughts, what is your view or ideas about trying to revive Mm. or try to instill in the younger people about continued use of Pami's language? So I think we are in a survival mode at this stage. We need to save it. And one thing I'd love to see is a, a little room like this, a museum of language department or language on the island, or something like this, a vocational school being done. There's been a lot of school leavers after year six there's not many employment out there. You can work with your own language and start local businesses mm. using your language, trade names or whatever, out of that and have some pride in your own language. And I think that will be something of giving them incentive to be the real ownership of their own language and say, this is a mine. Give them something to be proud of through little businesses. The other one is music. The other one is just literature reading, writing. I'd like to see this, being a school teacher myself, I'd like to get the year six kids to start writing stories about how do we plan our stuff? Mm. How do we do fish? Practical. Climate change mm. is coming. How do you write mm. about that? And where Terry was is a little island on there. It went under with water. People, you have to ask permission to go fishing there. Yeah, right. That island is drowned. 
that due to climate change, long time now. Mm. Really? Uh, mm. So this is something that I'd like, language can tell that story continually. The continuity of all the stories should go on. Mm. The songs, the stories, mm. say, this is my language, this is me, this is my identity. And when you listen to the collection of audio recordings, are there stories that stand out um, or have importance in that collection? Is there any killer recordings you can think of? Uh, with the, the songs, yeah, this I could relate because I there were once the first six were actually I heard them when I was a little boy. Whether they still exist today is something that I don't know. And I, it, I had a feeling it is lost. Mm. But there may just be a chance where we could still find who are the people who sang it, because it is done in the southern part of the island. And they, um, I, I was telling Steve, there's a story about the people of the south who actually spoke backwards. And I was trying to pick, pick that, but I, I could mm -hmm. not pick it because the language wasn't from Parma. It was totally different. The songs, uh, I've never, we've ne I've not, there was no phrase that would even, I could pick. Mm. I couldn't. That's amazing. So yeah. this is a language that mm. you don't know no, what no, it no, is, it where be, it's this from. Is from uh, and, and, and the sound is more like the nearby mm. islands mm. who are very strong in tradition, like Ambram, yep. mm. Pentecost, Epi, mm. Mm. or Malekula. Mm. This is it's sung on the southern part of the island of Parma, mm. where none of us even work, could work it out. Mm. I would love to know what he was talking about. Mm. And so, did you hear these songs when you were young? These, I heard these them, yeah. people were singing, singing them back yeah. then. Mm. But like, <laughs> like what Johnny was saying, that they're more, you know, yeah. sacred, traditional yeah. songs that yeah. are not too many people will have access yeah. to besides the ceremony. Yes. Yeah. yes. Some of these are sacred because of the either it's calling the spirits. Mm. Yeah, that could be one of them. Often the general public don't understand it because you are sounding into the unknown or a source of power that mm. you think is. Yeah. yeah. So I would love to go back to this place and work it out now at my age now because I was a young boy when these ones were sung. But at this level of understanding, I'd love to go and find out. Mm. If the tribe is still there, see many of them also was this fact that the missionaries, that's why one of the things of Terry's work is if you look at the map of Palma, you will have found that he was um, working from the south and working backwards to where the mission is not there. Okay, yeah. And he was, uh, he was trying to capture that part because then he knew that he will be more exposed to things that the church has may have lost in one way that's why i said this is gold yeah <laughs> and so that song is like pre-missionary yeah yeah music. yes yeah mm -hmm. so and uh, those six songs need to be um, searched and find out what they really are mm -hmm. whether there's any people left who still sings this where there's a big roots of trees that have been cut out you dug a hole and put it there. And I think when one of a few of the recordings you'll find that they use the sticks to hit. Mm -hmm. And the other one, they would, with these big roots being dug and put on the ground, you take a hole and put it on top, it becomes your base. You use sticks to hit and it goes doom, doom, doom. Yeah, okay, like mm. a drum. Uh, yeah, mm. a couple of, the, maybe one or two songs that has that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we don't have that anymore. We um, don't do that anymore. No. This is where things lost. Yeah. You know, yeah, it comes to the fact yeah. that um, meanings, eh? yeah. meanings of songs, yeah. uh, basically connects to the significance uh, culturally, yeah. traditionally, the way people live their lives. Yeah. This has got significance. It connects the spirits. It has that significance, uh, ancestors, yeah. ancestral sort of connection. It, it folks in, in folks uh, basically the power. You could actually feel. Uh, there's a, there's a presence here that we are in with the unseen together. Mm. And some of these dances you can actually feel that I'm not just a human being. 
I'm a spirit living in a body. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and this is connecting. This is, mm. this is yeah. making. And I think some of the researchers may have found that, or maybe they didn't. They were only given a little glimpse of it because it's sacred. Yes. And I think that's where often uh, these this kind of songs, uh, when asked to be done, they may have not been done fully. On Parma, we our drums yeah. are not that big like um, on, on the island next to Parma called Ambrim, where they have this big, big slit um, okay. drum and um, like a wooden, yeah. wooden, yeah. huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. Uh, but on the other islands, we have a smaller slit drums, and you stand them up, and it's hollowed a bit out. Um, yeah, you get them, yeah. but you use the. And stick. what do you call them? The big plank. Uh, from Palmas one, we call it Ave. 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 And mm. Amuas, Amuas means hitting. I'm, I'm hitting the Ave. Namuas Ave. Yeah. I am a chief. My family is chief. Yeah, mm. So my father, he was the chief of the island as well. So much of this. And every time, sometimes I've been asked to hit the tam tam. Mm. Uh, yeah. Namuas Ave. Mm. Uh, Namuas. Navise. Na. Muas. I'm hitting the tam tam. I am calling the people. Mm. Mm. That's right. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, it's common across the Melanesian, Melanesian countries. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. have slit drums yeah. uh, in different forms. Yes. The Ambram Pama right. is standing upright. Mm. Ours is called, you remember in Michael Webb's, mm. the Garamut. Yes. It sits on the ground and it's big. big yeah. Yeah. So it's calling of the people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same concept, yeah. it's a yeah. different way and a different form yes. of presentation. Yeah. Uh, calls uh, the and this one on here, this... Is that this upright? Yeah, up the, the smaller ones. Smaller, smaller uh, ones. This long, you can hold it with your hand and... Yeah, you can, okay. Yeah. Huh. So that's for dancing one. Could be one of those harvesting times mm -hmm. where you can. Have, it's it's women are involved, people are whole community involved in dancing, while the um, the band they, they, this the mob is in the middle, yeah. the musicians and they hit that and you can hear it at this. The first one was singular, yeah. one person, and then it came to a few men. Yeah. The second one, this one. It has the community. The whole lot. Mm. Mm. Right. And what do they walk around, do they, or dance? Yeah, yeah. the idea of running around is you're giving it extra power. Oh. Um, and you can't go anywhere else because the beat gives you uh, this, yeah. There are songs that get you just up and down. And this one, yes, you can, if, if you can play it again, please. Yeah. Uh, you'll hear. <laughs> oh, that's a, a way. It Take sounds like up. celebrations. Yeah. Ah. Of harvest and, uh, and community rejoicing together. And what a lot of fun. So I think this may be still alive. This one? Yeah. Nice. Because it's a community, people, anything that involves a community is still alive. Hmm. And the other ones are more sacred. It may have, we may have lost it. And would they do this one now, like in times of harvest, or what do they use it for now in modern times? Yeah, but this is where cultural um, festivals, arts festivals, are important to revive some of this stuff. They, many of them have we've lost. I'm, I just hope that they're still there. Mm. That's my biggest hope, mm. and mm. Uh, I'd love to go back and see whether we can trace it and capture it and just say, uh, you've got cold, don't lose it now. Mm. 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 Well, it comes to show that um, mm. uh, the value yeah. of research yes. and, and understanding people's culture yeah. as documented mm. needs to start going back because if they're not, haven't heard this or practicing yes. this, yeah. it reminds them that, you know, there's value in, yes. in the work that uh, people do on, about, you know, saving, preserving, maintaining culture. Mm. That that goes back to this this work from Terry, you know, mm. and to hear today, I'm I'm speaking to you, feeling so emotional about this. Mm. Yeah. 
that either we've lost some stuff or we kept it, but thanks to Terry, um, that there's so much there that needs to be dealt into uh, just to see if we can so get, get them to survive mm. in the future. It'd yeah. be amazing to play mm. some of this music mm. for mm. people back, back uh, there. Uh, you could just see their eyes. Oh. Uh, we, we were there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah. And are people still holding those beliefs? Well, they, you know, do. They, yeah. they, they do. I think, I think people in, 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 like the Aboriginals up in, up in Mori and working and living with the Aboriginal people, just wanting to get to know them. And it was lovely just to see how spiritual they are. Uh, they're in a very deep way. I, I mixed with them. I, and, and you could still sense that part. Even in their struggles, they felt a sense of spirituality that not many people understood. Hmm. They're very spiritual people. Uh, and, and, and I guess that's w in the Melanesian community you find the same thing. You feel as though that in this fast changing world of, of a lot of um, influence from outside, you still hold on to that part of the spirituality in you. Because that's the only thing that can make sense to you hmm. or to the community. And I'm, 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 of course, I'm a Christian. Uh, this is a very quick example. That there's a part of, of my island, a piece of land that belongs just to my family. Nobody just goes in there, even if they are very strong church people. With all the power they have in God or whatever, they can go in there, and if they lift a knife to cut a branch there and elicit cries, they have to run for their lives. <laughs> <laughs> seriously. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. They, they, and they could not even work out, why, God, didn't you save me from there? Mm. Yeah. Mm. It is that power mm. that I have no answer to it. Yeah. Mm. All, all I know is there's something bigger, you know, mm. and it is there. Yeah. Well, mm. the, the common thing in, in mm. Melanesia, and I'm pretty sure other indigenous cultures, is uh, the connection to the land mm. and supernatural powers that... Yeah. Uh, you know, it's normally passed on through yeah. people. Yeah. Now, that's also suffering now when people die and yeah. it's not passed on. passed on. But there's always yeah. two sides of it. There's a good and there's a, a bad. bad yeah. And the bad is scary yeah. because it, yes. um, it, it involves a lot mm -hmm. of... Um, and, and people die. Yes. Mm. And like what John's saying, is uh, yeah. it's easily related to in, in our culture. Mm. Mm. So it's, it's to take the good. And Christianity has come in. Mm. It shifted a lot of that. Mm. Uh, for, for better, for worse, mm. it, uh, the, the, the essence of spirituality is the important thing. Yeah. So I am from a mission area. Yeah. Now, the funny thing about that land is this, that if some, we could have a fine day like this. Someone goes up there at 9, 10, 11, 1 o'clock and just, you know, and, 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 and the lizard cries. Suddenly a storm just comes in, heavy mm, lightning, okay. right out of the blue. Yeah. And everybody around the whole island say, ah, it's from the Obed family. <laughs> they, wow. They, they will just say that. They, yeah. They, yeah, okay. they will know it's just somebody went there and moved that place. <gasps> just like that. Mm. <laughs> Good spirit like a bird. Yes, and I was saying goodbye to you. God, you go with God's blessings as you. Yes, and they used to one English word, they farewell, farewell, Milo. So this is a common farewell song. And you say thanks to God, which is the God of truth, who has mercy on us. All of us. <laughs> Farewell, farewell to you. Uh, you'd have a lot of, whenever there's a conference on the island, everybody has to, everybody come to the beach and sing this song. Mm. As the participants go back to their homes. Uh, oh, it's very beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank, thankfully, I, when I played it out there, I had a tear in my eye and said, thank you, Terry, you captured this one. Mm. <laughs> so so it's been around a long time, the same song. Yeah, this one, they sing it every time. And even on New Year's Bonani, you have to close, that's one of the closing songs of the, of the year. Yeah, of right. the, yeah. Of the celebrations. Of yeah. 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 Well, we'll go towards, you know, concluding this and, you know, final remarks. Uh, but 
such collections as there is um, is part of this process that uh, we at Paradisica are trying to encourage and focus on is uh, collaborating with speaker communities like the Pamis mm. and the archive and connecting that knowledge and, and meaning back. Yes, I think that's basically for me, it comes back to survival. Uh, we've got a resource here that is invaluable. Um, thanks to Derry, uh, I think I'd love to see what we've, we've mentioned and the work that you've, uh, this department has done in, in this two-way um, method uh, so that then our people can have some access. And say, yes, that, that's us. That's, that's who we are. We own it. And I think it's, it, it is at a crit critical time now where Vanuatu is growing so rapidly uh, and um, I would love to see something uh, in this fast flowing river. Some We need to put a, a dam there somewhere to just hold mm. uh, this progress mm. Uh, mm. before we lose everything. Mm. And for me that's basically what's in my heart right now. I don't think of anything else other than uh, there's something that I could do for my people. But this is something dear to my heart because it's mine. Yeah. I really felt that I now own it. Yeah. And I've got resources to work with. <laughs> Johnny Obed for joining us on Talk Save Culture Talks. It was so interesting to talk about the importance of Terry Crowley's collection and its contribution to the people of Parma and Vanuatu. We join with you in acknowledging and paying tribute to Terry. And thank you to our listeners for joining us. If you would like more information about Paradisec, the work we do, and the online catalogue, you can visit our website at www.paradisec.org.au. Toxave Culture Talks was launched as part of the United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages in 2019. We would like to acknowledge the support of the Australian Research Council's Centre of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language and the University of Sydney, the University of Melbourne and the Australian National University.